You know, I want you to think for a moment that you're going into an automobile dealership to buy a car. And the salesperson comes to you and she tells you that this car that you're looking at is likely to fail 70% of the time. How many of you would buy that car? But yet, we do this every day in our justice system. We have a system that has been socially broke for at least three decades. We have broken down communities. We have broken down families. We have broken down people. And now, we have a system that is economically broken. We can no longer afford to incarcerate people at the levels that we have. We have a system where the definition of winning for the prosecutor is to see how long can I lock you up, regardless of whether that is going to fix the problem. We have a system where the defense bar defines winning as how quickly can I get you out of this thing, regardless of what that will do to the victim, the community, or even their clients. I would say that we have to hack our justice system. And the first hack is that we have to turn our core system upside down. We can no longer afford to have lawyers talk, judges rule, and no one listens to the victim, no one listens to the community, and certainly no one listens to the offender. We need to be sure to have an aggressive system when we're dealing with people that are very dangerous. But guess what? The majority of the people that the criminal system deals with are not dangerous. In fact, the majority have substance abuse problems. They may have mental health problems. They're broken down in many ways. And yet, we want to fix that problem by incarcerating these people. We need a problem-solving court where the prosecution, the defense, and the courts come together to identify not what laws were broken, but what was the harm, who's responsible for causing the harm, and how do we fix the problem. Hack number two, we need to bring the community back into our justice system. You know, indigenous people had it right. It took the village to deal with the problem, and the village dealt with the problem. But we, because we're so smart, we move away from the village. In San Francisco, we have created a very different reality for many. We have a thing called neighborhood courts, where we have community members looking at the offender, looking at the victim, and looking for a different solution and we do it at a fraction of the cost without creating criminal records. <laughs> Hack number three. We have to end the war on drugs. We can no longer incarcerate our young because they're using drugs. We can no longer incarcerate our young because they may be selling drugs for subsistence. And we certainly cannot continue to incarcerate our young because they have a substance abuse problem. It is unconscionable, it is immoral, it is unethical. But yet we continue to do that. I have chosen to work to end that. I don't know how many of you walk up to an airline counter and jump on an airplane 
where the airliner tells you that they have a 70% probability of crash landing. You probably wouldn't do that, right? But we do that with the criminal justice system. And see, we're not buying cars when we're talking about the criminal justice system. We're dealing with lives. We're in the airline, and we want to make sure that the airline lands safely. We have an opportunity to make a difference, and I hope that you all join me in this November to turn the war on drugs around, and for the first time, look at reducing penalties and putting money into education for K through 12, and putting money in substance abuse programs, and putting money to deal with mental health issues. Thank you so much. I am very honored.